Hello, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we've got a goldfish, a comet goldfish, and you can see that one eye is protruding much way bigger than the other one. Now if you have a closer look, you can actually see that the, the lens of the fish is, is probably gone and it's likely going to be blind. Um, so this, I would think that it, it may be quite painful and and basically if you can watch him swimming, he he can tend to bump that and knock that and so it's very prone to getting the eye, um, the, the bulging eye, um, getting lacerated, uh, pain, infection and things like that. So it's a good idea to remove this eye uh, and then that way he can swim uh, again uh, normally. With, with the surgery uh, that we're going to do, it's going to be a pretty gross type of surgery. So if you've got young kids and things and you're not used to blood, uh, might be a good idea to turn it off now. Uh, but I was going to talk to you about the process. So we're going to have your fish uh, and we're going to anesthetize him uh, in the anesthetic solution. Uh, here we're going to be using alfaxlone, which is a dog and cat anesthetic. After we've got him suitably anesthetized, uh, we'll go through the whole procedure. And I'll be talking you through uh, what I do and what are the pitfalls and things to look for as, as we are proceeding. Right, so here we've got a tray uh, full of all the equipment that we need and including medicine. So uh, firstly, this is our fax loan, which we'll be using to anesthetize the fish. Uh, and as a post-operative care, we're going to use uh, antibiotics. Um, I'm going to use long-acting oxytetracycline. And because it's going to be a painful procedure, I'm going to use flunixin, uh, which is an anti-inflammatory. The other drugs that we have, uh, here we've got doxapram, uh, that's a respiratory stimulant if the fish goes too deep. Uh, but as, uh, as we talk about anesthesia, uh, we can talk about its use and things like that. Um, if the uh, eye bleeds too much, uh, what we have here are, I guess, yeah, cotton swabs or you can use coarse swabs uh, to just put digital pressure uh, onto the uh, socket. Uh, and over here, we, we can also use this is phenylephrine, hydrochloride, uh, and it, it helps to constrict blood vessels if it bleeds too much. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to apply some uh, sort of a fish band-aid in, in a sense. Uh, so we're going to use a combination of, uh, this is uh, betadine, um, which is available through your pharmacy. And then over here, we've got um, my version of fish bandage. It's a peloxamer. Uh, powder, uh, which you'll see, we'll apply that. Uh, and in terms of um, equipment, uh, we've got forceps. We've got two different kinds. One is a rat's tooth forceps, uh, and the other one is a it's very fine uh, way that you can actually. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it, it does uh, help you to hold and manipulate tissues uh, without causing too much tra uh, trauma to the delicate structures. Uh, the other thing is we're going to use a very sharp pair of scissors to make the first incision. Uh, and then we're going to go through with, this is a blunt ended uh, and it's curved uh, scissors. Uh, so that way you can actually work around under the socket without putting too much traction on, on the globe. Uh, the reason for that is that the globe, I guess there's an optic nerve connecting to the brain. You don't want to tug on that too hard. Uh, and again, we've got another one here. I guess you can use... Um, different things but here I've got a uh, needle drivers you can also use that to, to, to pinch uh, the large blood vessel to stop the bleeding and again with um, with the injections uh, I'm just using insulin syringes uh, they come in 30 units or 50 unit sizes uh, and it's about a 20 uh, 29 gauge needle uh, suitable for small fish So now we're going to put Fred into the anesthetic, so gently hold him with wet hands, transfer him in there and we'll wait for that to take effect uh, and in the meantime we're just going to set up to be ready. So here we've got Fred, uh, you can see he's getting anesthetized, he's um, sort of looks like he's spitting a bit and his respiratory rate, his opercular movement is um, getting fast and erratic and now it's actually uh, stopped. So. Uh, we know that we're uh, in a decent level of anesthesia. Um, and when we know, how do we know when he's uh, suitably anesthetized? Because this is going to be a fairly painful procedure. Uh, you have to do a pinch test to the tail. So uh, similar to the pinch test we do for dogs and cats uh, of the 
um, membrane, the webbing between the toes. Uh, so we do the same over here um, at the caudal peduncle, just the base of the tail fin. So you pinch that and you can see that's a slight reaction. Uh, that means he can still feel pain and we need to leave him uh, in the anesthetic solution for a little bit longer. Um, you notice here we've not used any um, aeration uh, because it's going to be a fairly quick procedure. Uh, the water is quite cool so there's going to be uh, enough oxygen dissolved in the water. But if it's going to be a longer procedure, anything from half an hour and longer, um, it's definitely necessary to aerate, uh, if not um, actually to actually use oxygen and oxygenate the water. You can see when he's being anesthetized, he's going to start losing balance. Uh, he might go through an excitatory phase. Uh, you can see now he's sort of struggling because um, he's got his writing reflex. Uh, so that's, that's he, he's not used to not being able to control himself. Um, so that, that's quite a common uh, reaction. Every fish is different uh, on how they react to the anesthetic. Right, so I think he is suitably immobilized. Uh, we just do that pinch test again. Uh, about a couple of minutes has passed, so yeah, I think I think he's quite ready uh, for the surgery. So what we'll do is we'll uh, remove him and place him on the table. Uh, here, this table we have is clean, and we've also wet it down so that he doesn't get too dry. So with this NS uh, procedure, it's going to be fairly quick and I'm just going to intermittently irrigate his gills and skin and fins, make sure it doesn't dry out uh, and make sure he still breathes. Um, pretty much a lot of the surgeries in fish, uh, well in this case in particular, uh, it's going to be, it's, it's not an aseptic uh, or sterile surgical feel, uh, it's an external thing. Uh, so you, you try and take your precautions, uh, but you don't have to be too too strict about it. So you can see this fish uh, is probably a little bit too deep. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift up his operculum. I'm just going to irrigate his gills a little bit. Uh, you can do that either through the mouth or through just by lifting up the operculum. So we want him to be breathing a little bit. Right, so it's, um, we initially we'll just grab a little bit of the eye. Uh, sometimes depends on the forceps, uh, you may have to get something quite fine. Uh, we're just going to cut the membrane around the eye. Uh, and then once we've done that, this is when we go with our curved scissors. And we go in and we cut through the large vessels and the optic nerve. What you also have to warn your client is that uh, this is not a pretty surgery uh, and that your fish is going to have a pretty deep hole um, a pretty big deep defect behind its eye uh, but that would slowly um, grow over and get shallower and shallower as you go along so now we just um, make sure that that blood vessel will Plot, um, and just by putting some pressure there and after that you know make sure that you actually remove all the um, fat that's surrounding the eye uh, this removal of the entire eye uh, this is called exenteration um, so the fish is getting a little bit light so we're just going to get some um, anesthetic and we're just going to irrigate the gills
there are not a lot of things you can do to try and monitor um, how deep your patient is uh, so you just look at the opercular movements uh, mainly okay we make sure that that area is dry and we're just going to spray some uh, betadine very lightly making sure it doesn't uh, enter the gills and we're also going to puff some uh, this is the fish bandage uh, into the socket so that it forms a gel and it'll hang on to the antiseptic and retain that so it's for um, for a bit of res residual effect great um, so that's the surgery pretty much done. Uh, now all we have to do is give it some anti-inflammatories and antibiotics as a cover. Um, and we'll just give that intramuscularly at the um, base of the fins. the antibiotics, the oxytetracycline uh, and then the next injection is the anti-inflammatories uh, we'll just give it at the base of the other fin great and there we have it so we'll now revive the fish so okay so here is Fred uh, so he's in the recovery tank so this is a uh, it's fresh water without any anesthetic in it. Uh, what we do is we want to handle them very carefully and gently because we don't want to dislodge uh, that clot, uh, that blood clot, otherwise he will hemorrhage out too much. So gently handling him, um, if it's not breathing uh, fast enough yet, you can actually use your syringe full of just fresh water, uh, tank water, place that in his mouth and just to speed up the process, flush out any of the anesthetics that are there, also stimulate their respiratory uh, reflex and uh, uh, the yeah, respiratory and heart reflex. So you help him ventilate. Um, now that you can see his, his mouth is moving on himself, means it's respiring or ventilating by himself. Uh, the gill covers are gaining strength. Uh, so he's pretty much okay to wake up all, all on his own so there you have it uh, exenteration of the eye of a goldfish um, in terms of post-operative care uh, we can give him another jab of antibiotics about three to five days later depending on the water temperature the warmer it is um, the sooner the interval uh, the closer the interval uh, and also one more jab of anti-inflammatories so over the next month or so uh, that defect in the eye, it's going to re it's going to have skin growing over it, so it's going to be pale, uh, pinkish color, uh, slowly it will get shallower and shallower and then eventually become the same um, or slight depression uh, and then some maybe you might get some um, pigment, maybe orange color uh, growing over that so the defect won't look as gross as it is, as it is now, so that's not going to be a permanent feature uh, and if you look at him from the top, uh, you wouldn't notice anything too much different, especially in a pond full of other goldfish. Uh, so, here you have Fred, fully recovered and ready to go back into his pond with all his tank mates. Right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm Dr. Richmond Lowe, the fish vet. Uh, for more similar videos, remember to subscribe. Uh, please do uh, send through your comments so I can hear whether how you found the videos. I hope you found that was interesting and informative. Uh, and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.